the number of Americans who go to emergency rooms is on the rise. And you know those visits are not cheap. One study from 2017 found they cost all of us some $76 billion a year. And with big profits like that on the table, an NBC News investigation finds private equity firms are increasingly getting involved more and more. These are firms that basically invest in businesses with the goal of making more money, generating big returns on relatively pretty short timelines. Critics say sometimes at the expense of patients. And as more of them get into health care, some say they're putting profits ahead of people. Vicki Wynn has the story. Dr. Ray Bravant has dedicated his life to service as an Army surgeon and emergency room doctor. I took an oath to protect patients to the best I could. After he left the Army, Bravant took a job as medical director of the ER at Overland Park Regional Medical Center in Kansas. It was 2012, and soon after, he began raising concerns. I felt that they were prioritizing metrics over quality of care. He says by 2014, staff was stretched thin when an expansion project doubled the hospital's capacity, and the private equity-backed firm in charge of handling staff refused to add more doctors. It's a growing complaint across the country. Doctors and nurses concerned profits are put ahead of patients as more private equity firms take over health care groups. Today, it's estimated over 40 percent of the nation's emergency departments are overseen by for-profit staffing companies, all of them owned by private equity. These Wall Street firms look for a return on their investments on a shorter timeline, and academic researchers tell us the largest profits are often in the ER. How does that affect patient safety? What I, can, I was concerned with is having an adequate time to do the job properly. As our volumes grew and the popularity of our ER grew and our responsibilities grew, it became clear to us that my physicians were being asked to be in three places at once. Bravant says that wasn't the only problem. He says doctors and nurses were expected to improve metrics by admitting more patients without adequate exam time or bed space. You want your doctor to be the advocate for you. And if they have this business interest over their shoulder, they may not be able to make the best decision for you. Dr. Robert McNamara is the chair of emergency medicine at Temple University. He's also the chief medical officer of a group representing about 8,000 emergency doctors nationwide. Do you think private equity firms should be in the business of medicine? Certainly not in emergency medicine. You're having people that are seeking to make a significant profit off of health care. There are laws on the books to prevent the corporate practice of medicine. Are they not being enforced? No, they're not being enforced. McNamara says state attorneys general rarely prosecute these types of cases, and doctors often don't speak up for fear of losing their jobs. And these are billion-dollar companies that you're fighting. You're fighting Wall Street. Ray Bravant was ultimately fired in 2017 after raising his concerns. By then, the company that controlled his unit staffing was no longer owned by private equity, but by a for-profit publicly traded company. In 2017, he filed a wrongful termination lawsuit against the staffing company's subsidiaries. His former hospital was not named in the suit, and the private equity firm did not respond to NBC News. A year later, the company was back in the hands of another private equity firm. Bravant was eventually awarded $26 million. I had to be the guy that stepped up and said, this is wrong. There's a principle behind why I'm doing this. In a statement to NBC News, the staffing company Envision Healthcare, whose unit employed Bravant and continues to be private equity owned, says in part, Envision is compliant with state laws and operates with high ethical standards that put patients' health and safety first. The concern raised by Dr. Bravant was related to a hospital policy, not an Envision policy, and predates Envision's current leadership team. I want this system to change. I want people to believe that they can effectively change the system, even though it feels enormous. Vicky is with us now. Vicky, it's such, I think, an important look at this issue. And you reference it in the story there, that there are laws against this. 30 states have laws against what's known as the corporate practice of medicine that would, you know, stop these for-profit companies from running medical care. So if you're a patient in the hospital, what, like, what are you supposed to do, right? What should you ask your provider? What should you do if you're worried about the level of medical care that you're getting? Hallie, don't be afraid to ask your doctor questions like, who do you work for? Are you owned by a private equity firm? Are you uh, owned by a physician group? There's nothing wrong with asking for transparency in knowing who is in charge. Now, if you are concerned about the quality of your care or maybe the care of a family member or a loved one, absolutely report that to your hospital, your hospital board, as well as your local lawmakers. And Hallie, there may be some changes coming. In California, a lawmaker has introduced a bill there that would, in part, 
require medical facilities to get consent from their medical staff when they're making policies. So the idea is increase the communication between the people who are in charge and the people who are actually providing that frontline care, and hopefully patient care goes up. Hallie? Vicki, when we're so glad to have you and this investigation with us here on the show tonight. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.